Hello there, my name is John Tojek and today we're going to go over an Arnold tutorial of lighting an interior room. We will cover Arnold sky dome light as well as linear color workflow and Arnold sampling to get rid of noise in your final render. Alright, let's begin by looking at the scene here. We've got a, um, a model of the inside of my apartment in Venice, California 10 years ago. So we'll fly around. So what we're going to do, it's basically a box. So we're going to make a sun and um, have sun going in the front windows. I am using Maya 2013 with the Arnold plug-in point two, and the hardware is a Dell laptop. So the first thing we do is we go get AI and Arnold light. All of the Arnold items have AI in front of it, so you can wildcard for that. We're going to get the AI Sky Dome Light. The Sky Dome Light is very cool. Uh, there's also the AI Sky or the AI Area Lights. Sky you would use if you're doing a constant color. Sky Dome Light has multi-important sampling, so it is much better for uh, getting hard shadows and soft shadows and uh, you know renders faster less noise I'm gonna bring in an HDR image from my favorite website for SIBLs the Barcelona rooftop from HDR labs thank you boys now the first thing that Arnold needs to know about my new image is the X resolution if I look at my light uh, in the attribute editor it says what is the resolution I put in 3000, that's my X resolution across. It needs that for the multi-important sampling, and that is where Arnold shoots more rays at the brightest points of the image, giving you hard shadows and soft shadows and a better looking image. Now we're going to rotate this dome so that the sun is shining into the front of the apartment there it is, right where the porch is. One other thing about this image, it was a HDR format. You can use EXR, but it didn't show up in the hardware for me, so I didn't like that one as much. And um, I rotate through 135. The next thing we're going to look at is the intensity of the light. We have two variables to deal with here, intensity and exposure. So note that um, they're both doing the same thing. Exposure is more of the photographic f-stop term. So the equation for intensity is color multiplied by intensity equals 2 to the power of exposure. No, times 2 to the power of exposure. So 2 to the power of 2 is 4. If I increment this by 1, it's 2 to the power of 3 is 8. I increment again. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So each time I increment exposure of one f-stop, it doubles the amount of light. So that means I'll just leave my intensity at 1 forever. I lock it, and I'll use exposure is now 16. You could lock that to 0 and use only intensity, but now at work, uh, your VFX supervisor will always say in dailies, turn that up a stop. Turn that down a half-stop. It sounds cool, doesn't it? So uh, let's keep exposure in stops. You also need to put in what format is your IBL image. It could be a mirrored ball if it was a probe from the past or a lat long, which is more common these days anyways. Okay, now that we have that set up, I go to my Arnold Render Globals. Make sure that I'm using the Arnold Renderer rather than Mental Ray. And here I have my sampling, which these are the default values. And the first thing we're dealing with is the gamma correction. Everything's 2.2 for default. That's not correct, but I'm going to do my first render that way. And we'll discuss gamma color correction and linear color workflow. Here goes the first render. I'm going to let this one go in real time so we can see how fast or slow Arnold renders. And... Um, in the next renders, I will cut it out of the video because it gets very boring. I've used Arnold for many years at Sony on films like Hotel Transylvania, Beowulf, and Monster House, but using it at home is a whole new interesting experience. 
computer is not as good, but it can still render an interior in 28 seconds. Notice there's a watermark. Also, a lot of noise. That is all sampling. As we turn up the sampling, all of that noise will go away and the renders will take longer, but it's worth it. All right, now that we have our first render, the first thing to do is make sure we're in a correct linear color workspace. In the past, we used to go to the render globals and turn on color management for Maya. Now those things are gone when we're using Arnold and our controls are now here under the gamma correction as well as under the color management in Maya. We've got mainly two things here. It's more simple this way. Arnold is saying, do you want to correct the display? And number two, do you want to correct the textures with lights and shaders? You can do this uh, either way, more in Arnold or more in Maya. I'm going to do uh, less in Arnold. I want Arnold to not correct the display, so I leave that at one. And I want it to, yes, color correct the textures, shaders, and lights when they come in. That means I'm using JPEGs, SGIs, Targas, whatever textures I'm using, it's going to do a color correction on them, and it will not do that same color correction on linear textures such as HDR or EXR. So my textures are handled, display is ignored, then I go to the right hand mouse button here, color management in Maya, in this case my image is linear and my display is corrected because yes I'm always using an sRGB display. So now it's like I basically did two switches. I told Arnold not to do the display and I say Maya should do the display. I am going to render one more time like this and I just prefer to do it this way because um, the Maya color correction is the same no matter what renderer I'm using, V-Ray or Mental Ray. It's always true that I'm working in linear but I'm viewing it in sRGB. And then as you change the renderer, you know that the renderer is going to control the textures and you don't want the renderer to affect the display. It's the simple way. Now to double verify this, let's do a couple things. I'd like to uh, paste an image onto a card and bring it through. Now let's try that. Let's do, I'll throw down a polygon billboard right there in the middle and I'm going to throw a texture on there. The texture is going to be a, um, let's do an AI utility. AI utility can do all sorts of basic things like a flat. So flat will be just a ignoring the light image and I'm going to bring in the exact same Barcelona rooftop image and I'll paste it on there. It's an HDR image, it's floating point. If it comes in one way and renders out the same then I'll feel confident we're not screwing up the gamma. So there it is, a big billboard. One other thing, I'd like, rather than having black in my backgrounds, let's put down some sort of background. And we will do that in the Render Globals, Environment, right hand mouse button, create the sky shader. And my sky shader is gonna get the exact same color as the sky dome light. So I select them both. Take a look at them here, and I say this HDR should go right into my sky. So I just middle mouse drag, drop it in there. The other thing you want to do is make sure that your sky has the same rotation, which is rotate and Y 135. That's the same rotation as my sky dome light. Now I'm going to do one more render. Oh, let's increase the quality a little bit of my light. There's two main places you increase quality. One of them is more samples for each and every light or in the render globals. We'll just increase that to four and hit render. All right, that has finished rendering. That is 48 seconds. Remember, we are size 640 by 360. All right, there's an improvement in quality, and that is only from bringing up the samples in the light. Now, we see we have a background, which is matching the HDR we're bringing in for lighting, 
as well as that's the RHDR image pasted onto a plane. Let's save this thing out and look at it in Nuke. One thing to consider, when you do save image here, it will only be 8-bit. It's not going to be the same 32-bit that we're rendering. We're rendering linear. So that 32-bit actually gets stored in the temp directory. So I open up Nuke and I say, let's read in the temp directory. So I look at whatever file is the newest. Here it is as test. And we say open that thing. Okay, that's exactly what we were seeing in our Maya display. Nuke realizes this is linear. Uh, it will call it linear right here, default linear. And it will do a color correction. Same thing on this, this is our original HDR. The other thing to do is uh, if it goes in, at higher values, like our sun is value 4, 3, and 2. And then in our render, the same sun, 8, 5, 2. So we're valid linear color workflow. What goes in comes out the same way. So ignoring the noise and such, at least we know that we're gamma correcting in all the correct places. And uh, we're, our final renders will be linear to be later brought into Nuke and compress down to whatever our final format is. All right, so that's enough for the billboard and that's enough of gamma correction. Let's look at our shadows now. I'm going to take that card, make it invisible, and let's take a look at the shadows on this guy, very, very soft. Now we would like uh, hard shadows because it's a sun coming in. And you can see around the table there, we could get hard shadows. If we kept increasing samples, because of multi-important sampling, we can definitely get hard shadows and soft shadows from one HDR image. But one thing to keep in mind when you're using an HDR image of the sun, chances are it's not a high quality image. Unless you go to a place like uh, ICT and get a perfect sky probe of the sun, because it really is complicated to capture this gun in the sun, sun in the sky, chances are you're not really gonna get uh, a perfect looking shadow from this image. Like this guy, the values of the sun are 8, 9, 10. What they really need to be are 10,000, 50,000, 100,000. You could then, you could maybe fix the image in Nuke or Photoshop, or I'll do a real fast cheat. I'm going to do a create a light, a directional light. You know, it's all cheating anyways, why not? I throw down a directional light, Let's take a look at this guy in the work camera and scale it up. I'm just going to make this sunlight point basically where my image sun is pointing. The location doesn't really matter, but the angle does. So it's going right in the door, down a little bit. Let's move it back a touch. You know, I could push it out to where my sun is just to make it feel better. I can do I can do the color of the sun, color, eyedropper, make it nice and warm. The shadows of the sun, we know it's got to be ray traced because Arnold is all about ray tracing. Here we have light angle and shadow rays. Don't do your variables there. Do them in the Arnold's tab where we also have angle and samples. So my exposure, I'll start with two. My angle is, you know, same as radius. How big is my light, which is gonna change how much blur my shadows get. So a size of zero gives me very sharp shadows, but because it is a sunset, we do have a haze in the air. I'll give it a little bit of angle too. So those are slightly soft shadows. But basically this directional light is now gonna give me the hard shadows, and the HDR is going to give me the soft shadows. Let's also bring in a chrome ball for this little test because it helps me to see both sides of the room in one render. So there's a chrome ball. Scale that thing up. And uh, let's make a shader for this. The shader will come from AI standard. This is sort of the Arnold Uber shader where you um, make any sort of material that you want, all the basics. 
And to do chrome, it is uh, no diffuse, but all specular. And we turn the roughness to be so sharp, it's like a mirror. And then we can just change the name to chrome and then assign that shader. So I've got my sphere and assign. Let's do a save the image and file render that guy. All right, that last render now has the directional light as a sun and the render time was one minute. So we can see the only real difference is uh, we brought in, we've got some shadows on the floor and a little more orange color. So I'm going to increase the intensity, fix the angle a little bit, and then we are going to move on to sampling. So I want this sun to go into the room a little more. So I'll just angle it that way, hit the floor more, increase my angle was a bad idea. I'll turn that back to zero to give myself very hard shadows. Since I don't have hard shadows, I don't really need more samples. And uh, let's increase the intensity to three. A nice strong sun. Whoops. I don't want to increase intensity. I'm going to leave that at one, just like my other lights. I'll go ahead and lock it and only do it with exposure. I want to double the light. So I turn it from two to three. And that is one stop up. <clears throat> now, let's look at samples. All the places that we do samples are in the lights and then in the render globals. All of the noise happens from low or high samples. Now, that's really why I like Arnold a lot. When you're look deving, you work in low samples so that the renders go fast and you can fix a lot of things. Then as soon as you need to do a final render, you turn up your samples. Hopefully, you already know how high you need to go and then you just turn it up and launch it, <clears throat> which is much better with, than other renderers, uh, like when you do low poly faking or point clouds or estimate methods that to do a fast render, you have to turn down many, many different variables, and then you turn everything all up and suddenly the render looks different. That will never happen with sampling. It always looks the same. The Arnold philosophy on sampling is change things that are specific first and then the more general stuff yeah, straight from the manual it says going from the particular to the general so particular things are lights lights are first then would be glossy samples then diffuse refraction and then general things are aa samples watch these numbers up here aa samples is a multiplier of all the numbers below it so as i do four everything increases, GI, glossy, and refraction. If I only want to do diffuse increasing, we notice that only GI samples increases. And this sort of render is mostly GI. So as an educated guess, I'm going to turn GI up quite a bit. I have the chrome ball. I'll turn that to zero, and I'll turn this to zero. I'm going to do a quick render as a test. And the idea is I don't have any reflection or you know glossy samples needed just the chrome ball so I'll turn those guys to zero I've got zero refraction don't need any refraction so I don't need to spend more rays on those features but diffuse bouncing light I need a lot and then AA samples is the general overall multiplier I need a lot uh, you can read up here 576 is the GI samples I'm going to pause and we'll see how long this takes. Okay, as you would imagine, we start increasing the samples. The render looks better, but takes longer. This one, six minutes. And right down here, we can see our sampling numbers. It was four for the AA, the general, six for the GI, zero for glossy, that's why this is black, and if we turn the glossy up to four, there we get a decent reflection. And that only took 55 seconds extra. So you sort of decide the detailed things first. You bring them up slowly. And then as you need more and more quality and you're closer to the final render, you bring up the AA. 
Some of these things have different names, but diffuse samples is really uh, GI samples, or sometimes called hemi samples. Once you get up to render times of six minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you can start to wedge these things so that you discover how high you need to go. And let's describe one more thing. These are always um, two to the power of four, two to the power of six. That's where these numbers come in. And remember that AA samples is a multiplier at the very end. So you could set that to one and then just jack these guys up much, much higher. Or you can lower the glossy and diffuse and turn up AA samples because AA samples also helps for depth of field blurring and motion blur. Those two variables do not have their own samples, so you have to do AA samples to increase the quality of those two things. So if you don't have any motion blur or depth of field blur, your AA samples don't have to be large. You can only bring up the parts that you need. But if you do have blur, you might as well go with AA samples higher, diffuse samples lower. Let's look at Nuke real quick where I did try a couple of wedges. So here I wedged only the GI from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 8. Or in this example, I wedged AA, which is the general multiplier. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Like on this one, you can see that reflection gets better as we go higher. Where on this other wedge was only GI, my glossy samples never changed. So the chrome ball looks noisy all the time. Whereas with the AA wedge, the glossy samples get increased because it's a multiplier. It increases them. And even better than that, we'll be wedging up both AA and GI. So there they are, they're both at one, two samples, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So AA at eight and GI at eight gets me a pretty clean render. And if you want to see how long those take, you look at the logs the AAGI, and they will always list it out here. Four AA samples, four GI samples, three minutes. That's not that one. Let's look at the wedge of GI. Two AA and eight GI. That gives you 10 minutes. And then the AA was eight AA samples, two GI samples, gives you 20 minutes. The bounces is um, ray depth. I could use ray depth to try and give myself more light in the darkest areas. There is much more that can be said about sampling, but it is the way that Arnold makes final renders and very fast renders for look dev. It's a drastic improvement over the shortcuts of uh, point cloud and other methods. With that, I'm gonna stop the video, and the next time, we'll try this with color, maybe some textures. I hope you enjoy, thank you.